that's a good question. Uh, what I've seen, what I'm seeing around the industry these days, is a lot of interest in network automation for various reasons, right? We're seeing build-outs of the data centers, bringing a lot of demands on the, on the wide area networks and the networks that connect those data centers. We see the increased dynamicity of the traffic and traffic loads. So, various reasons why uh, our customers are investing in automation. Uh, last year, IDC did a did a study of around 150 telco service providers, uh, respondents from, from Europe, and number one priority for their investments uh, and transformational investments in the next couple of years was uh, investment in network automation. And uh, one of the aspects was to increase the level of autonomy as defined by, by TM Forum uh, Autonomous Networks. Well, that's the, that's the part of it is that TM Forum uh, autonomous uh, networks levels um, provide a framework for conversation. Right? Uh, a lot of organizations are finding it now easier to quantify and measure where they are and how do they progress through the, the journey of automation. Because ultimately, automation is a journey, right? It's not a one one stop investment kind of where you can go from zero to five. In, in, in one shot. It's a journey over multiple years. It's a continuous evolution of uh, technology, but also of organizations and, 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 and pro procedures and processes internal to, the, to, the, to those organizations. So, so the TM Forum provides a framework and it provides the sort of set of capabilities at, at each of the levels that organizations can then uh, look at and assess their own uh, operations against those, those definitions and try to define what is really important for them. Some of our customers are focusing on reaching a certain level at a certain point in time, but others are less concerned about the levels, but more concerned about the specific use cases. And it may be some cases they want to be level three or level four in one use case, but in other cases, they don't really care about that that much. So they want to stay at level one or level two because it's not as important. So that's the, it's a framework. It opens up a dialogue and it allows us to have a conversation in a structured manner and do the planning in a structured manner as well. Well, it's interesting when we talk about autonomy, right? People often jump to the very last levels, stages of fully autonomous networks with AI driving the, the autonomy. But before we get there, there are so many fundamental technology principles that need to be implemented to, to enable that journey that I was talking about, right? One of the most important principles that we are seeing around the industry is intent-based networking. Intent-based networking that enables uh, moving that source of truth from the network to the controller and then allowing allowing the controller to, to really truly implement those intents across multi-vendor environments, multi-domain environments, and, and really allow the operator to have a consistency in their network design and implementation. Second thing then after that, is understanding the closed loop automation and understanding the need for all the, we call it assurance capabilities, all the telemetry, all the alarms, all the OM tests, all the, all the information about the topologies and state of the network uh, combined with the configurations in a network. And all of this has to come together because the only way you can do closed loop automation and then more advanced use cases, AI enabled use cases is through uh, using all of these capabilities together, not in div as in div independent silos, which has been the case over the years. So those are the two, two fundamental principles. Then we get into more advanced agentic uh, use cases. Some of those agents are more based on, on uh, program programmable agents or policy-driven agents. Some are evolving as AI-driven AI agents, but that's the kind of the evolution of the principles and evolution of enablers for automation. Well, AI comes in a multiple different ways, right? We've seen a previous wave of AI more focused on what we call today classic AI or more machine learning use cases. In uh, maybe 2017, 18, 19, 20, we started introducing some of those. And those were mo focused more around uh, baselining, outlier detection, anomaly detection, and those kinds of use cases. With uh, generative AI and large language models in the last few years, the focus has shifted uh, more towards assistance 
of, of kind, right? So assistant could be an assistant that helps an operator uh, better access the documentation, information about the, the system, about the network, uh, APIs, uh, assistants could be helping with coding and programming of those automation use cases, definition of intents, workflows, and, and so on and so forth. But then assistants uh, evolve into assistants around generating the information from the network, dashboards, uh, reports, and things like that. To finally more autonomous assistants where, uh, where, where those agent, AI-based agents start learning and and uh, evolving the, their own understanding of, of that, that, that particular domain and building that, that independent uh, agent or set of agents. Uh, so there is, again, an evolution of capabilities potentially there uh, with apl application of AI over the next few years. Well, as no, at Nokia, we have been at this at this for many years now, right? As a business and, and and as an organization, we started in early days of IP network management with, with the first first really network and, and service manager uh, in the industry, and then we evolved these capabilities from management to service management to SDN control to automation platform and now to AI enabled uh, set of use cases. And throughout all that, we are bringing to our customers sort of use cases and tools and capabilities that can enable this move and or journey to the automation levels, right? But the ultimately, uh, as I said, automation is a journey. So it requires partnerships with, that, with our customers. It requires uh, multi-year planning and, 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 and execution of variety of different use cases. And what we do is bring experience from other uh, customers from around the world. We bring use cases that are industrialized and deployed in many, many places. And of course, we build, a, we bring the, the very capable automation platform, network services platform that can help uh, realize those use cases, uh, automation use cases in their network.